Well, we're out here at the bees and things are not going as planned, which is usual for our bees, right? Every time we turn around, something else is going on with them. We've only have three hives and we've only been keeping them for three years, but it seems like something is always happening out here. So today we are taking apart this hive and we're going to be combining it with our other two hives. That wasn't the plan, but we lost the queen and that's the decision we're coming up with. So I'm heading in here. We did a quick check on this hive yesterday, which led us to the conclusion that we for sure lost the queen. Actually, what happened was I came out here to feed them and I found the queen dead on the landing board. She has a number on her that's painted, so it was really easy to identify her. For some reason, she, I don't know exactly what happened. Maybe she was sick or ill and I think she died inside the hive and they drug her out. So we see eggs in here, which means that the queen laid the last three days. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened. She laid and then she died. So <laughs> we found her yesterday. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is just split these, split this half and half to our other two hives. The way you combine them is kind of neat. You use newspaper and we're just putting one box on each of the hives that's pretty much split between the amount of bees in each box and brood there's brood that's developing and resources they don't have much honey now because it's just been raining and they have been eating all of their honey so got some slits cut in there the bees are aware that they do not have a queen in the hive that we're adding so they should be very accepting of this queen's pheromones and that's why you cut those little slits so they can kind of smell each other and then they will chew their way through this paper and unite and hopefully everything goes smooth and we don't have a bee brawl but I don't predict this to be a problem at all we've never actually quite done it this way but we'll see how it goes Real quick. I think that's pretty much centered right oh yeah that's perfect We finished adding the box to the second hive, but things didn't really go that well. When we were in there, we were hoping to find the newly mated queen was laying really well, but she's not. She's not laying very well at all. Um, and I've already dispatched the original queen that I made the split from probably about a month or so ago. So not only is she not laying well, but the bees in here are making a new queen. We found like a supersedure cell, which is where they're trying to replace her. And it's just way too late in the season for that. That was my decision for combining this hive over here with these two, because it's just too late for them to make up their own new queen. So we have a few other options. If we don't let them just do what they're gonna do naturally is to go get a queen. We could go buy one locally, or we could combine them, which is the choice that we chose. So now I'm in this predicament again for this hive and it's just not looking good. I was hoping things were gonna be a lot better, but I guess I have a bad report today for the bees. We're on a ride today and we found out that the berries are totally ripe. These are super ripe watermelon berries. My favorite when they're that ripe, they're like a wine color and they taste really similar to raspberries. Once they're processed, that is super sweet. Very exciting stuff. I'm gonna get a bunch of these harvested. Look at that. Look at them, they're like grapes. Whoa. My pouch overfloweth. I have like one mission when we come out here and it is berry picking, but we actually have other things to do. So we're gonna keep going. <laughs> Look at that.
it. Colors of the hills. Yeah. You know fall is here. The blueberries are ripe up on the mountain. All the plants, the leaves are changing orange. It's beautiful, but it's sad to see because that means summer's over. Oh yeah. Those are good. Okay, you're in, dude. You're in. Sit there for a while. Well, moose season is coming up. It's actually almost here. It starts in a couple days. We don't know if we're moose hunting this year. We plan on it, but things change. So we're gonna get the rifles sighted in, make sure they're all good to go. We got the 270 we're gonna be shooting, and then we got the 4570 lever action. low to the right yeah, a little okay. low to the right we're shooting a target at 100 yards about and i just i got to make a couple adjustments i hit it but i was aiming a little high and a little to the left so i got to bring it down and to the right a tiny bit look how big that bullet is Big one. Looking good. I can't see very far, so this one sighted in for probably I'm comfortable shooting like 75 yards with it. That's what that little uh, target is. It's like a six-inch square target. The 270, I reset one up, so we're about 100 yards with that one, so we're good to go. But. Now we gotta buy some more ammo because we're almost out. That is beer batter fried flounder sandwich. Little lettuce from the garden, homemade buns, mustard, and pepperoncinis. Eating good out here. It's delicious. Well, perfect day. We got a ton of berries. We sighted in the rifles. Bandit got a ton of exercise, so he's gonna sleep good tonight. We're gonna take the long way home.
The chicken coop is getting some loving today. Much needed. This door we put up when we built the chicken coop. So it's almost four years old and this is a door we got for free. It's an interior door for a house. And as you can tell, it is just completely, it's toast. The bottom fell on it the other day. So we're building a new door. We got some pieces cut with the sawmill. We're, I'm basically gonna take this one down and use the pieces I cut to make it the same exact size and she should fit. Latch on it and build a handle. Look how good that fits. Chicken coop is a mess right now. It does not usually get muddy like this, but it's been raining for six weeks. So we've been putting straw down, shavings. It's helping a little bit, but I'm having to put a lot down in order to deal with this, which is unfortunate. Eric and I have a lot of things we want to kind of tackle for the chicken coop. We've had the chicken coop for four years, and we have a lean to that I'm under now. We have another little lean to on the other side, and then we have like various little roosts and structures for the chickens throughout. And those need some rebuilding and repair. The chickens love forest life. It, the whole run, I think, is fenced off. It's probably about a thousand square feet. And I was just thinking about this earlier. We actually originally had an electric fence around it. That was years ago. So and we have permanent fencing now for them. We have a lot of birds and we have a lot of work to do. Probably gonna take us a day or two. And I know Eric's been wanting to weld a door handle for our beautiful, nice new chin coop door. So that's probably what we're gonna get started on. Oh gosh. So this is really funny to me. This is straw that we bought probably about two weeks ago and it's been raining so much that it's growing, it's sprouting the grass seed in it. So actually that's, I'm fairly certain that's barley. Pretty funny. This is the same stuff that I use in my garden. <laughs>
How cool would this be if they could use this during the winter when there's snow, huh? I gotta grab some more stuff. Clean things up in here. Got a few new roosts for the chickens. And we rebuilt this little structure. It's it's not really for winter. It might be for winter now. We built it a little bit better, but the new chickens, the pullets, they absolutely love like jumping all over this thing, going underneath it and jumping on these little sticks on top. So we use our leftover slab wood from the sawmill. Got a nice little lean to built up. I wonder if, because it looks like we have extra here, I wonder if we should patch. No, you'll be able to run just strings right there. You'll be able to run strings right there, it's no big deal. There's staples in it and everything. Okay, let me get that. progress we are patching up and stringing the net that we've had over this coop for about two and a half years this last winter was particularly hard on it because there was a lot of wet snow which like clumps together and it sags the net and then it's all downhill from there but I totally recommend this uh, poultry netting we had a really bad issue with hawks the first summer here they were like just taking down the chickens left and right I think we only lost two but they were here every day harassing them and since we put this up we've almost had We've almost had zero issues. Just recently we lost two, but I think that was actually because we let them kind of free range a little bit for the last few hours of the day. Almost done. Okay, we're good. Made our way over to our little miniature fruit orchard here. This is a question we get a lot as how are the fruit trees doing? And I feel like this right here is a perfect example of how they're doing. So if you couldn't tell, the answer's not good. <laughs> Fruit trees in Alaska is a big challenge as we're learning. This little area we established probably, I wanna say, it could have been two and a half years ago, we put seven fruit trees in. They're plum and apple fruit trees. They are zone one to three and we are zone three, but they are struggling. I'm going through and I'm pruning off the dead stuff. Probably could have done this earlier in the year, but I'm gonna do it now. I'm always hopeful that maybe it'll sprout. These trees really don't come to life until June and then now it's the end of August and they're, you know, I can tell they're already going to be shutting down soon. So not a lot of time for them here. I do have to say we haven't put that much energy into the trees out here. I don't really fertilize them that much and I do water them. We did have a lot of weeds when we first started and we put all this wood mulch. Something I have been working a lot on is our flowers. So this back little row, I've been working on establishing some flowers and a lot of those I started from seed this year. That was a huge undertaking, but it really paid off. We had such beautiful flowers this year. That was awesome for us, for teas and the bees and just to look at. Out of these seven trees, two are sadly just totally dead. They're not probably totally dead in the roots. The, the root stock is alive. I can see there's like a shoot at the bottom, but they're not, they're not looking that good. I think I have maybe two that look okay, but they don't, they only produce flowers the first year that we actually put them in the ground. And then we had a little bit of fruit that year. We have had nothing since then. So we'll see what we can do, but not being too drab. They're just, they're not, they're not working out that well here. I, the, the winter is just so harsh and I think it sucks all of the life out of these trees. After I get done in here, I have to head out and check on the bees. I was saying what gets me about them is that this year the buds like they didn't have, send up leaves until the top part. So it's like they're naked. You know what I mean? Like what is going on with them? I'm thinking this is alive, but it's not. See how it's, 
I'm going to pretend a big bumblebee didn't just land on your belly. Okay, I've got good news. This hive is doing awesome. It was probably about two, two and a half weeks ago that we realized we needed to replace this queen. We went out and got a queen locally and she is awesome. We had to put her, she came in a cage and we had to kind of slowly introduce her over a few days to this hive, but they accepted her pretty much right away and things are just looking great. So they've got a queen and they're all set up to go through winter. She's laying a bunch of eggs. Things look good. So I'm not actually really going into their hive today. I just wanted to make sure that she's been laying in there and they accepted her and all that. So I'm just putting them right back together. Look at all the bees in there. At this point, we're still feeding the hives. This is two to one sugar syrup. And we got these really nifty things called rapid feeders. That's this little gizmo here. It's really awesome. It does just that. It lets the bees take down the sugar rapidly, which is what we want. We're gonna be feeding them like this for a few more weeks until we actually have to like shut them down and get them ready for winter.